Hey, this is Jeff with Game Daddy, and I'm back from the dead to bring you a parent-centered review of Dota Underlords. Is this game worth your limited amount of time? Can you play it with your kids? Well, let's find out. Dota Underlords is one of the biggest players in the growing auto chess genre, which is basically a mod of Dota 2, which was originally a mod of Warcraft 3. The aim of auto chess is to very deliberately build your forces out of a decent pool of characters, whose abilities can support and synergize with each other enough to adequately counter the opposing team in repeated automated battles. In other words, this is chess where the tactics are in juggling your team composition and board placement rather than normal chess's strategies revolving around equivalent forces battling for board domination and careful well-planned attacks. At the beginning of the game, you're presented with three rounds against bots to hopefully build the beginning of your team, while gaining gear or alliance bonuses to gain more attack, defense, or other unique abilities that could strengthen your units. The random nature of the gear offered, and most of all, the units you're given to choose from, can really make or break your strategy, and force you to either re-strategize, or to make temporary selections that you will eventually switch out for the specific units you have in mind. Each unit has both an alliance and a class that, when having multiple units that match either of these, will gain new abilities, strengths, or defenses. For instance, having two units of the Savage Alliance will provide 10% more damage to all allies, having four will provide 25%, and having six will provide a whopping 45% more damage. Warrior class units will give you extra armor, assassins will give you higher chances on critical hits, and having multiples of the druid class will instantly upgrade a random lowest level druid unit, which brings me to leveling your units. Every unit starts as a 1 star power level, and in order to level it up to a 2 star unit, you've got to purchase 3 of that unit that automatically combine. Your 2 star unit has twice the power, and if you get a set of 3 2 star units, that power will double again, giving you a 3 star unit, the highest level you can attain in the game. Every round you gain a base 5 gold to either save or spend. Rounds in which you win, you're rewarded with 1 extra gold and winning streaks can add further to that. To counter that, players experiencing losing streaks will also gain extra gold, avoiding having players with lucky rolls at the start of the game steamrolling everyone else. Another element of gold management is interest gained for every 10 gold you have, up to a maximum of 5 extra gold gained per round when you're carrying 50 or more. This definitely adds a new element of strategy when it comes to taking losses early in the game in order to set up a higher income per round mid to late game to splurge on more expensive units or to quickly add to your player level, which in turn adds to the number of units you can have on the field. One of the last more elementary things to know is located on the left of the screen where all of the players, including yourself, are listed. The stats shown are your player hit points, the amount of gold the player has, and their player level. When taking a loss, the stars on the remaining units of the attacking team are counted up and added to round damage based on how far into the game you are. On the right side of the screen are several tabs that give you information on the makeup of your team, live damage stats for each unit during a round, and an items tab to quickly allow you to swap gear around. The top tab shows the number of units that fill alliance slots allowing you to better plan for getting those bonuses and to quickly reference what those bonuses are. So that's basically it for the gameplay, and now we can get on to the game's progression system that seems to be following the typical free-to-play season pass format, popularized by games like Fortnite and most recently Apex Legends. Right now, while the game is still in beta, you work through what they're calling a proto-pass. With each level you progress, you unlock things like victory explosions, decorative player items like flags and avatar holders, and my favorite, new board designs. In order to gain these levels, you must complete daily challenges that reward increasing amounts of experience points in a day, which I have to admit is a perfectly acceptable experience system for my tastes. There are also 9 rank medals, each with 5 sub-ranks that signify your skill level in the game. If you attain the 9th medal, Lord of Whitespire, you earn your place on the global leaderboards, which I'm not really sure what the point of that is yet. Bragging rights, I guess. With all of that in mind, let's get to our parent points. The game length is perhaps the most limiting factor for you as a parent. If you do really poorly, you can expect a full game to take around 20 minutes before you're knocked out. 
If you do well, it could take 30 to 45 minutes on average. These game times are even worse when you consider the fact that when playing in multiplayer, there's no way to pause the game in order to handle the kids two rooms away coloring on your walls with permanent marker. So is it droppable? Barely. You can fix this problem by choosing the play at your own pace option when playing against bots, but you do lose out on the fun of playing against others and gaining proto pass experience points. Is the game kid friendly or playable? Well, there is cartoon violence, so that's up to you to determine. I'd say the game is not playable for kids under 7 years old. You could probably let them play against bots on easy setting, but to compete strategically against other players would take a bit more brain power that they don't have until year 10 or 11. Is the game rewarding? If you take satisfaction in the learning process of mastering complicated game mechanics, then yeah. I've played through a lot of games in which I get totally trounced, but still come out of it feeling pretty good that I've figured out my playstyle and my strategies a bit better. Us parents have to be especially careful with our spending, and the price here is absolutely right. The game is free to play, however I expect there to be a paid season pass once the game is officially released, which is not too bad honestly. Dota Underlords is a really great new game in a new genre that has a lot of potential to appeal to older gamers like myself who enjoy deviating from the typical offerings of first person shooters and other genres I've honestly played too much of. It's got a great novelty factor and it's well made to boot. Even in beta, the game feels well polished enough for 20 or 30 hours of enjoyment, at least before some of us get too obsessed with the meta of it all. So I'd say put your kids in bed and give Dota Underlords a shot, I don't think you'll regret it. Who's your daddy?